Hey guys, it's Shauna from with love from vinyl.etsy.com and lovelyrusticweddings.com. I make glitter tumblers and sell glitter and water slide decals. I am glittering a few tumblers today, so I figured I would hop on since it's been a minute since I have videotaped and posted. Um, so today is the first layer of glitter on a few different tumblers. I generally do the Mod Podge method for my glitter. Um, it's all personal preference. There's quite a few different methods you can try. I do recommend if you're getting into or new to tumbler making, try them all. See what fits you best. See what you enjoy the most. Um, especially if you plan on making it a business, you definitely want to make sure you enjoy the method you're doing. Otherwise, it becomes a chore and not something you look forward to doing. So try them all. I particularly like the Mod Podge method. I like the way the glitter lays. I like... I don't know. I'm weird. The Mod Podge, brushing on the Mod Podge is calming to me, so, and I hate mixing epoxy. So, Mod Podge it is. Oh, I'm sorry. And then I kicked you guys. So these are the first layer of glitter. Um, at this point in the process, the tumblers have been prepped, so they've been sanded and then washed and then spray painted because the majority of the tumblers that I'm going to be doing are either light iridescent or white colored glitters so it's just out of habit I usually do spray paint all of mine but you don't need to if you're using a darker metallic color uh, the fun thing with iridescent glitters they're not opaque so you can change the base color and it'll influence the color of the glitter so it's kind of cool to play with your spray paints when you are base coating and see what different colors you can make using the exact same glitters uh, they all come out a little bit different so in any event um, I am using Matte Mod Podge. I glop it on, which is what you were just watching, and then I smooth it out so there's no lumps, bumps, or ridges. The first tumbler is going to be all one color. It's a 20 ounce modern curve, and we're going to use opulent opal. So this whole tumbler is going to be all one color. They're super easy to do once you get the Mod Podge on. I'm going to come around behind the camera and try to stay out of your way as best I can. You just sprinkle the glitter on wherever it falls. So it's all one color. You don't have to worry about doing an ombre or um, lines, fading, any of the fun things. It's literally just sprinkling the glitter on and making sure you get full coverage. I always do two coats of glitter. So when I prep the cups, part of my prep is taping off the tops and the bottoms because I prefer the way that it looks with the rim that's personal preference so I have tape here to create an edge at the top and the bottom I will leave that tape on until I do the next layer of glitter so that is literally it for the first layer of glitter this tumbler is done it'll be set aside to dry and we can move on to the next color this one this glitter is opulent opal and it is available at with love from vinyl.etsy.com if you are interested it's an opal iridescent glitter so with a white base coat, with a white base coat, it shows as white, but it reflects back like a rainbow of different colors. So it goes with a lot of different. If you're doing ombres and different colored glitters, it goes with a lot of different colors. So it's a really fun one to have. I got all new paper plates today, so it'll be fun trying to get the bend in them. That goes right back into the container, ready for the next cup. So I'm going to set that one aside, get a different paper plate, because now that'll be my paper plate for the whites. The next color we're going to do is going to be on another 20 ounce skinny. Nope, it's 20 ounce modern curve. And it's the same way, where you're going to, it's already been taped, sanded, washed, spray painted, um, and now we're going to Mod Podge. So as I was doing on the first cup, while I was introducing who I was and what I do, you just slop on the Mod Podge every which way. I just like to get it on there pretty thick when I'm first starting out because I don't want areas to dry while I'm still trying to get coverage. So once I get it on there and I have some extra to move around, I'll start smoothing it out to get rid of all of the ridges because those will show in the glitter. So you want it to be smooth before you add any glitter. 
So that's what we're doing now. If I have too much Mod Podge on, I can just scrape it off into the, the container. I don't know if, yeah, that's on camera. My tripod blocks half of the, um, the screen, so I can't always tell what you guys can, what you guys can see and what you can't. So I apologize for that. So right now, like I said, I'm just pulling off the excess glitter or uh, Mod Podge before we put the glitter on and making sure we don't have any ridges that will show through in the, in the glitter when we add that. So the Mod Podge does need to be smooth before we add the first layer of glitter or the second layer of glitter, whichever layer you're on. We just happen to be on the first. Once it looks good, you are ready to glitter. This cup is going to be done in all one color as well, and it's going to be rose gold glitz. Come back around to this side so you can hopefully see. I have a few different, well, a couple different rose golds. I have rose gold glitz, which is a little bit lighter of a rose gold, and then I have rose gold glam, which is a little bit darker. Both are custom mixes. And available at with love from vinyl .etsy .com. So again, this is just a solid color tumbler. So we're going to, that's it. You're just going to sprinkle it on, let it dry, keep the tape on until the second layer of glitter is added. When the second layer of glitter is still wet. So at this point, if this was the second layer of glitter, I would remove the tape. I take the tape off after the second layer of glitter while it's still wet to get nice clean lines around the glitter where the transition happens from the glitter to the stainless steel. And I um, tape before I spray paint so that when I remove the, the tape, you've got the stainless steel showing instead of the spray painted base coat color. So that's it, we're gonna let this one dry. Put the glitters away and move on to our next one. The next one we are doing will be an ombre and if you haven't checked out some of the other videos that I've done I have done um, quite a few videos on first and second layers of glitters I've also done some on the ombre and doing it there's an easy way to do it if you're just starting off with ombre colors it is often easier to do I'm trying to Sorry, trying to get the glitter off the cup or off the plate. It's often easier to do an ombre for the first time if you're still learning. It's easier to do it with two similar colors and then work from there. So we're going to do an ombre in, um, actually we'll start with, I've got a couple of ombres we're going to do. So this one is the 30 ounce modern curve. We're going to do a two color ombre. It's going to be white at the top. Well, it's going to be opulent opal at the top and we're going to do gilded grunge at the bottom. Gilded Grunge is another custom mix that I do and is available at in at with love from vinyl.etsy.com. This tumbler is going to have a decal that says raised on sweet tea and Jesus. And Gilded Grunge is like, in my opinion, the perfect color for like a sweet tea cup. It's like a really mellow orangish color. But because it is a little bit lighter of a color, it's easier to get the ombre right than it is with like a dark purple into a white transition. So be patient with yourself if you're new. The ombre does take some time to learn and make it a little bit easier on yourself by starting with some lighter similar colors. And if you want to check out that other uh, video that I have that shows a little bit of there's a cheat way you can do an ombre too where you're going to do the bottom and the top the colors are going to be but then you can take a mixture of the two colors and sprinkle it into the middle and it helps to create that fade effect a little bit easier but you can um, work up to doing a free-handed ombre it takes practice it's just discouraging anything that is new is discouraging while you're learning I mean that's just that's just the way it is so be patient with yourself it'll get there and I like I said I do them um the Mod Podge method so my first layer of glitter I am NOT stressing out over getting the perfect ombre I'm not stressing out over making sure it fades the way that 
I had envisioned. Um, I take advantage of doing two layers because the first layer is going to be kind of like setting up you know where the colors are going to fall and then I'll have that second layer where I can tweak and make sure that I like where they fell so nothing is is unfixable so be patient with yourself while you're while you're figuring it out and don't be discouraged if you don't love the first layer you still got the second layer to tweak it okay so we are doing the first I'm going to use that same rose gold because gilded grunge is that same pinkish color so we're going to start with gilded grunge on the bottom I'm going to come back on this side so hopefully you guys can see so when I first start on an ombre I start at the bottom and you're going to keep the cup sort of flat and sprinkle down and this is where this is where the solid color is so we're not transitioning yet. This is all solid color glitter as though you were doing a solid color cup. When you're doing an ombre, you can lay it flat. And then when you're ready to start transitioning, you're going to tilt your cup up and sprinkle down. So I'm going to aim for here, give or take, and let the glitter sprinkle from there. I want Mod Podge to still be exposed because I want the next color to fall in between these particles of glitter and fill in that Mod Podge that's exposed to get the color mix so that you don't have harsh lines where the transition happens. We want a nice faded line and it's totally up to you how far you want it to go. Like I said, this is just first layer, so if we don't like it, we adjust on the next but you tilt up so that it sprinkles down. So I don't know how much you guys can see, but there's actually sprinkle down happening all through here where, I mean, even down to here, where the glitter is transitioning and lots of Mod Podge is exposed. I'm sorry if my voice got really loud. I'm literally right next to the, to the phone now, so my apologies. So once you get it to where you like it, you'll switch to the next color, which is going to be opulent opal. Now I've actually started doing it a little bit different. On my next layer of glitter, I start at the top now. And you can do it anyway, but I start at the top, fill in all of the solid areas. So I keep it flat, filling in the solid areas at the top. And then when I'm ready to transition again, I tilt it the other way and let it sprinkle down into the, just like we did for the, I'm not as particular because, you know, it's already, some of the Mod Podge is already exposed, but I let it sprinkle down into the next color, making sure that all the Mod Podge is covered. Now when I tap off the excess, for this one I make sure that the areas that have the other color are on the paper towel so that I don't mix the color in with my white. Okay. So there's that one. Those two colors I just love together. So you can see where the, the lighter colors are easier to get that fade. And I can't even tell if you guys can see where the transition is because it's right where my tripod is blocking my screen but it's easier when you have two similar colors or two light colors it's easier to get that faded ombre effect so we'll set this one aside and let it dry put the glitters away and the next colors i didn't even look to make sure i had ready oh because one of them is a custom mix Hopefully I've got it mixed. Let's check. Sorry guys. I did not think to check. So, so far the colors we've used, if you like them, were Gilded Grunge and Opulent Opal for that last cup. We used Rose Gold Blitz for the cup before and Opulent Opal for the cup before that one. The next color is baby blue 
and petal pink. Here we go. We do have them. Yay! All right, so the next color is a three-color ombre. Baby blue, petal pink, and opulent opal. I'm trying to make sure I have my plates in the right order so that I can just flip through them. You do them the same way when you're doing a three-color ombre. You're going to go the same way that you do on any other cup. You start with the Mod Podge. And like I said, I just slop it all on there just to get coverage in the beginning. And then I'll worry about evening it out once I get it on there. No, honey, I don't have a water bottle in there. Sorry. Kiddos looking for excuses to get out of bed. Whoop, did you see I just made a big old mess too? Okay, so now I'm just evening it out, making sure that I've got no bumps or ridges. And then we will start with the first color. On a three color ombre, I still do it the same way I usually have done on the videos where you start at the bottom and work your way up. On the last ombre I did, the difference was normally I would start at the bottom and work my way up with the colors. So I would have um, glittered in the transition before I glittered the top. I don't remember when I switched and I started, started you know, tilting down and glittering down into the ombre, but I did. And I do not do that on the three colors. So the three color ombres I still do the exact same way. If you've seen any of my other videos, the same way that I've always done. And if you haven't seen my other videos, I probably just confused you. So my apologies on that too. So the first color we're going to do is baby blue. It's a custom mix available at with love from vinyl.etsy.com. You start at the bottom flat. And then when you're ready to start transitioning into the next color, you're going to tilt it up. Because it's three colors, you're going to have um, a little bit less width in each of the colors. Now this just happens that the, the second color I'm going to do is not as dominant. It's more of just a hint of pink, so it's going to be mostly blue at the bottom, then a little subtle hint of pink, and then we're going to go into opulent opal for the next color. Okay. So the next color I am doing is petal pink. So with this one, because I hit you guys, I'm sorry. Um, it's a really just hint of pink, so I don't even bother doing any part of this cup flat when it comes to the pink. I'm sprinkling the pink in with the blue and I'm letting it ombre into where the white's going to be. And I never even go flat with it because it is just like a pop of pink and that's it. And it's going to look more dominant than what it's going to be because right now you've got some pink clinging to the blue glitters but not to Mod Podge. So after we're done with this layer, after it dries, we're gonna dry brush and some of that pink is gonna come off. So it won't even look as dominant as what you're seeing. Some of this will come off. And the next color will be Opulent Opal. And I will start with the cup tilted, sprinkle into the white and let it fall into where it will be solid white. Keeping in mind that, again, it's going to look more dominant than what it will be in reality because some of that white's going to cling to the glitter um, itself and not to Mod Podge. So when you dry brush before you do your next layer of glitter, that's actually going to come off. Okay. And I'm not going to tap this one because I don't want any of my pinks. Well, I'm not going to tap it over the plate. Give me a second. We'll tap it over the bin. Okay. 
Okay, so that's a three color ombre. And like I said, it's just a little subtle bit of pink, not too much. And then we'll dry brush after this one dries, add a second layer, and that will kind of even out all of the ombres and give a little bit better of a fade than what it is showing. Because some of this white here is going to brush off and you'll get a better idea of where everything falls. And I point that out so that you guys know, like, you know, if your first layer of glitter, if you don't love it, it's not looking right, don't do anything. I mean, don't get discouraged yet. Brush it off, see what happens with the second layer of glitter. Okay, we've got one more after this, and then I will let you guys be. The next one is going to be a 30 ounce skinny. And it is going to be the opulent opal. And Gilded Grandeur. Okay, so ready. 30 ounce skinnies are tall and skinny, which I love, 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 love these ones. They are my favorite. It is the kind that I personally have for myself because they come with a straw. And they fit in the cup holders of my, um, well, both of my cars. We have an Acadia and a Suburban, and they fit in both. So, with five kids, I'm always on the go. I would like a cup that can be on the go, too. So, that is my cup of choice. A 20-ounce skinny fits in cup holders as well, but I drink everything super-duper cold. And the 30-ounce skinny holds more ice. So, that's my cup of choice. Right now I am just evening out the Mod Podge, making sure there's no bumps and ridges. With 30 ounce skinnies, I tape off the bottom, but I do go all the way to the top with the glitter. I don't know why I do that. I started that way and I just haven't changed. Yet, there's always time for change. I might change it one day, who knows. All right, once you look good, you are ready to move on to the glitter, and we are doing Gilded Grandeur. That's a custom mix available at with love from vinyl.etsy.com. And this is a an ombre. So with the skinnies, I stay flat a little bit longer than I do with any of my other cups because, well, they're tall and skinny. So once you're ready to start transitioning, tilt up. Now I'm aiming for about here and I'm letting it fall. I want it to fall to at least about there. Nice and scattered. You can go taller, or farther away from the cup. Okay, once it looks good to you, give it a shake. Tap off the excess and move on to the opulent opal. Now this one will go ahead and do the same way that I've done on other videos where I'm gonna hold the glitter up and I'm gonna start at the bottom and let it sprinkle down into the solid color. Make sure I got it everywhere. It looks good from this end. So this one is the Gilded Grandeur. This is Opulent Opal. 
I'm sorry. I'm Look, sometimes I twist it for you guys just so I can watch the sparkle myself. That part never gets old. And I don't even think you guys get the true effect of how sparkly these glitters are. They are gorgeous. So that's it for this one. I'm going to set this aside, let it dry, and then I will move on to second coats. If I'm ambitious, I'll hop on and record it. If not, well, there's always tomorrow, right? Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you have any questions, let me know.